So far in our Flash Word example, we have a broad overview of some of the key features we're going to be working with in Vue. And so now what I want to do is I want to start to zoom in and look in more detail at these features. And specifically in this video, I want to talk about conditional rendering, which involves the use of directives like the if, the else, and also the else if to conditionally render elements on the page based on some Boolean JavaScript expression. And we've seen a few examples of this so far in our Flash Word demo, things like only displaying the answer once we actually have a value for that. So we set that up, we have this paragraph element, we're saying if the answer is not blank, right? If that evaluates to true, we're gonna see this on the page. And of course, because our data in view is reactive, when we make our Boolean expressions involve things like our data properties, we will see this reevaluated as we use our interface. If we change answer, that is gonna potentially change whether or not we're seeing this paragraph based on its value. So in general, using the the if and else, else if directives, pretty straightforward. Uh, but there's a couple technical things to understand. The first is if you're using a v else or a v else if, it has to immediately follow some element that has a v if. For example, let's say I had injected another paragraph here. This would create an error. In fact, let's go ahead and run this just to show that error. So I'll refresh our application and I'll pull up my web inspector. And we'll go over to the console tab. And here's our warning coming from view. Uh, and it's pretty clear what's going on here. It tells us exactly what the problem is where we're using a v else or v else if with no adjacent v if or v else if. And then it actually points to the specific line where the problem is. And seeing this is actually just a good reminder in general to always have that console open. So if you're getting feedback from view, errors, warnings, that sort of thing, uh, you can find out more information about it and uh, address the problem. All right, so quick fix on our end, we'll just get rid of that paragraph and that should bring it uh, back to working order. Another point to understand about conditional rendering is as we've seen in things like our show feedback div, oftentimes we're grouping together content that uh, we're showing and hiding. Uh, and in this case, I just used a generic div for that, but another element that you might want to employ is the template element because this element is actually designed for exactly the kind of thing we're doing here where this content is not necessarily something we're gonna see on initial page load. It's something that will be dynamically shown by JavaScript after the page has loaded. Um, and in fact, let's jump back to the notes for this video because I've got a definition of the template element pulling from the Mozilla Developer Network. Uh, we're told that it's an element uh, for holding HTML that is not to be rendered immediately when a page is loaded, but may be instantiated uh, subsequently during runtime using JavaScript. Right, so it's designed for this sort of thing. And uh, if you're a stickler for HTML semantics, which we should be, um, then it is perhaps a more appropriate element of choice versus a generic div. Um, but at the end of the day, either would work. Moving on while we're here in the notes, the other directive that is related to conditional rendering is the vshow directive. Like our conditional directives, it'll also allow you to toggle content on the page. It's just how it's doing it is a little bit different. And to show you what I mean, let's actually pull this example from the notes into our Flashware demo so we can run it. And in the example, I just hard coded our Boolean expression as false, but let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's make it dependent on uh, our our answer data property. So I'm gonna say if answer is not a uh, empty string, then we should see both of these paragraphs. All right, let's go ahead and load this. All right, so on initial page load, answer is blank, so we don't see either of them. But as we start typing the answer, we see both of them. And then if we make the answer blank again, they disappear. All right, now what I wanna look at is what is actually happening behind the scenes in our document object model to make these paragraphs show and hide. Uh, and to examine this, I'm gonna switch over to my elements tab in my web inspector. And looking within my div ID app, if we look at the bottom where I had these paragraphs, you'll notice that the second paragraph that we had the V show on, it is part of our document object model, but the reason we're not seeing it on the page is because it's got this style of display none applied to it. All right, now compare that. Let's enter an answer again to bring back both of those. Now example B, which again is the one that we have the V show on, it removed that style so we see it on the page. Whereas the previous paragraph, the way we're seeing that is it actually injected it into the DOM. Whereas if we get rid of it again, we make that false, it removed it from the DOM. 
right? So when we use the V if conditional, the way it's showing and hiding the content, it is actually adding and removing it from the DOM. Whereas with V show, it's making that toggle happen via CSS properties. Now the end result on the page and to the viewer is the same. It's just the behind the scenes way it's doing it is different. And that of course raises the question, well, why would you use one over the other? And it comes down to this, it comes down to how often you plan to toggle that content on and off. For example, imagine our example B paragraph here was like a notification widget that we wanted to frequently show and hide uh, as the user is interacting with the interface. In that case, we would want to use vshow because the process of showing and hiding that by just changing the CSS property is going to be more efficient than having to manipulate the DOM to show and hide it. Uh, especially if we think about, you know, view is like a big system of dependencies. So if we had other elements inside of this paragraph that was relying on things like our data properties or had its own event listeners, like all of those things would also have to be updated in views memory as we toggle that content on and off. Um, so again, from a performance standpoint, just, you know, showing and hiding it via CSS is going to be more efficient. On the flip side, we also want to think about the uh, performance of the initial page load, right? We want to get our interface to the user as quickly as possible. So if we have some elements that we don't need on initial page load, um, it would be best if we could avoid having to load them into the DOM. And that's where the V if comes in because it's not going to add to the DOM until we actually need it. So we could potentially uh, speed up our initial page load. But again, if we're talking about elements that we do anticipate rapidly turning on and off, then it is worth that initial loading cost to just get it in the DOM and then toggle it via CSS as needed. Now, all of these performance things we're talking about with VIF versus VSHOW, these are not things that you're going to notice a, a tangible difference in this basic example. But everything we're doing, we really want to think about how this will scale up, thinking about more complex interfaces at the scope of something like Google Docs, where you might be dealing with hundreds of elements that are potentially either being rendered on initial page load or not. And that's where you start to, uh, we'll start to notice uh, the kind of performance gains and losses. All right, so we just want to make sure we're, we're developing good habits early on in terms of the tools that we're using and understanding where one tool is more appropriate than the other. And with that, that concludes what I wanted to say about conditional rendering. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward concept within Vue, but definitely important, something you're going to be using frequently throughout your interfaces.